a little bit of feedback. Can you hear that at all? A noise? No. That no, might be my end. That was the dog. <laughs> We've got the dog down here. Right. We are live, I believe. We'll crack on. And I think it's gone now. So we'll yeah, we'll go ahead. So hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Um happy Thursday. Um, as mentioned, I said that we'll be going live inside the community. Uh, with some amazing individuals who are clients and friends of Shift Success. And this evening, we've got Laura and Jack Corbett, who are uh, actually ex-police, which we'll go into uh, in a second, but also they are now the founders of Lazy Days Garden Services. So they're going to be sharing their story from getting going to where they are now. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be many lessons along the way. So Laura and Jack, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, normally I kind of start off this interview with other or guests about, you know, finding out where you're from and, you know, where you were raised, etc. But you are the first couple that we've had, husband and wife duo, on the podcast. Um, so you've kind of, you've broke that seal. And uh, I thought it would be more value to share your story of how you, how you met Okay. I mean, do you want me to start or do you, you want to start? Sort of <laughs> the usual. Yeah. Um, so we met a uh, training to be um, special police constables back in, I've got the date written down here, when was it? September 2012. Hmm. Um, so yeah, we both finished university, hadn't we? And then yeah. I think well, I originally joined because I wanted to be an animal health inspector. So I thought, oh, it's relatable. Never really thought about the police route. Um, yeah, and then we went through training school, which is obviously where we where we met you, Alex, as well. That's so, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, 10 years ago. That's mad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then went through training school. Um, and then I don't think we really spoke. Particularly. You were one of the quiet ones. <laughs> so Jack was one of the quiet ones in the cohort. Did, did, did Jack catch your eye? Yeah, I think yeah. I always thought oh, he's quite good looking, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope you thought the same about me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I remember we didn't really speak much at training school, and then it got to the end, and I remember we'd all arranged to go out for drinks, the whole cohort. And then I don't know what happened, but everybody cancelled and it just ended up being me and Jack going out for drinks. Oh, really? <laughs> did, did I, did, so I was obviously in the same cohort as you. So obviously yeah. I didn't I didn't turn up. So <laughs> it, obviously it wasn't planned, by the way, just so you know. Um, so that was like fate, right? Yeah, um, so, yeah. and I think it worked out right. Yeah, well, I think we ended up at a pub. Was it somewhere in the Peak District? This old man pub, and we decided to sack that one, and we went to a nicer pub somewhere else. But yeah, that I guess turned out to be our first first date. So amazing, yeah, amazing. Wow, ten years ago. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. So, um, obviously, um, you know, we met in special, uh, in special training, and. Um, for me, I had my reasons of joining the police and I wanted to become a regular. For you guys, you know, both of you individually, what kind of attracted you to, to the police force? First of all, was a special. Uh, I had prior to 2012, had, had been thinking um, what I wanted to do having finished uni in 2011. And it was kind of a toss up between military in some way, shape or form on the police. And I thought that joining the specials would help me get into the police as a regular. As at the time, I don't think any local forces were recruiting for regulars. So I thought oh, I'll join the specials. Okay, amazing. And you said you went to uni, Jack? I went to uni, yeah, yeah. I, studied uh, psychology amazing and what you know because that's completely two ends of the spectrum right so you psychology and then you're interested in joining the military and the police 
was it something that you know it was the family members in the, in the job or anything like that which attracted you to it because psychology is completely different right yeah well um i had i, I was intending on joining the marines after sixth form but then i basically panicked because i was jealous of all my friends going to uh, like uni open days and thinking yeah. oh, i want to do that rather mm. than going off to some barracks somewhere and getting beasted so yeah i panicked and did like the ucas application the day before and yeah. just almost chose psychology on a whim yeah yeah I like that. So I, I, I relate to that completely. I can remember on GCSE days, you know, everyone was opening up their, their results, et cetera, or, um, and also their A-levels and uh, sixth form. And I, 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 for me, everyone was really excited about the prospects of going to uni. I didn't obviously go, but I can remember feeling, have I done something wrong here? Uh, and I think, you know, I completely relate to that. So you went to obviously uni and obviously you, you've obviously joined the specials first of all. Um, and Laura, obviously you went to uni as well, right? Yeah, so, um, so, well, yeah, very different path, really. So I, from a very young age, wanted to be a vet, mm. um, brought up around farming. So that was what I always wanted to do. And then um, I got offered a, an animal science degree at the University of Liverpool. Um, so I went off and, and did that. And then didn't really know what I wanted to do after finishing that degree. Um, and animal health inspection kind of you know for the council that go out and, and do these things um that interested me and someone said oh why don't you join the police specials you know that could help help you yeah so that that's really why i joined um the police specials not with the intention of then going into the police mm. um but yeah that, that was my reasoning behind that amazing and jack obviously your, yours is a stepping stone so you kind of knew uh I'm going to join specials and then when the applications come out for regulars you went for it right yeah 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 essentially amazing stuff and you and did you get in first time jack was it you know straight in for you or yes i think it was first time yeah, yeah amazing stuff and you know you know it's going to you know special to a regular did you notice any differences in you know i suppose obviously your workload is going to be different, but did you notice any difference how you were, were treated compared to being a special to a regular? Because I, I, see, I see two types of cops. Cops who actually slate specials in a kind of a humor way, but also there's cops out there who, you know, God, I can't, I can't deal without these specials. So for you, did you, did you notice any difference? Um, I, it would be difficult to say because I think from memory, I think I only did two shifts as a special before I then started oh wow um training school to be a regular at which point i obviously jacked the specials in so wow. I, I, I wasn't a special operationally for, for very long at all got yeah okay so oh god it's really straight in then okay yeah. so obviously getting as a regular and how long were you in the police for jack um i was in the police i think i joined in September 2013, mm. and then uh, finished February 2021. Awesome, awesome Russia. stuff. Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great stuff. And, you know, obviously, you know, there's always a story of kind of an origin story of why you know police officers want to change their life or you know change the or change something in life for you jack what what was it that changed for you personally that you know encouraged you to you know leave the job and you know change your life essentially um it, it, it all started uh after essentially i was dismissed from the police after mm -hmm. a uh a palaver with a psd yep psd investigation so that. I think prior to that, we'd always thought both individually and together, oh, it'd be good to have our own business or be self-employed. But it was always like, I've never had any idea of what, what it would be. Yeah. But I just, yeah. I think unless that had happened, we'd still be, obviously I'm still in my career at the moment, 
we'd still be doing our jobs. But, yeah. you know, yeah, it does probably, take yeah. something. Well, not always, but in this case, it was that significant event and what we went through mm-hmm. that basically made us think, right, we need to change what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, and just go go for what what we want what we've always kind of un- underneath kind yeah. of do something what we want to go yeah, for with business so, yeah. 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 Um, yeah so i guess it all police almost did us a favor yeah <laughs> you know i i always say you know when when shit hits the fan in life whatever it may be right losing your job or you know something happens in your personal life you can never look forward at that time and go there's a reason i'm going through this it's only when we look back and connect the dots and we go, that's why it happened. Mm-hmm. Right. We, we go, oh, that's why that happened. I, I can see that that was the trigger for me to get this particular outcome I have in life. So, you know, I completely agree. And you've got, you've got to, you know, kind of thank the police of, of what you've been through, but, mm-hmm. you know, and I kind of, you know, kind of um, resonate with Jack a bit as well. You know, I was, I was a detention officer and I remember once this, this detainee was kicking off in his cell, he had something around his neck. He was on level three observations and, um, I went to the cell first. He was very aggressive. I'm going to, I'm going to hurt you. He was telling us all of that. And I got hands on and went into the, uh, the, uh, cell and the way it was, I grabbed him and he put a complaint in, uh, f- for me and some other detention officers. Um, uh, I think it might've been a police officer as well. And my inspector brought me into the office and told me that I'd been served papers. And I can remember feeling so shit for doing my job at that point. And, I was almost in like a limbo stage. And one thing that I've, you know, I've spoke to you, Jack, and I've spoke to other police officers who have been under investigation and, you know, ended up, you know, changing their life as a result of, you know, dismissal or just getting fed up with the police, that they're in this limbo stage and they feel like they can't, they can't do their job, you know, without being kind of ridiculed for that job. And for you, when you obviously, you know, were were going to serve your papers, did you feel like, you was in that limbo stage as well, or? Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a, a difficult twelve months. It was. That's long, how long it went on for. Well, yeah. It was a bit longer actually, but yeah. Um, yeah, it was a very very difficult twelve months. Um, you got to see a paper just before Christmas, didn't you? Was it twenty nineteen? Uh, That's right, isn't it? Christmas Eve, I think it was. Christmas Eve. Jesus. Yeah. So it was a hell of a Christmas. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, we not, yeah, not not knowing what's happening, thinking what what the outcome could be, what it might be. Mm. Um, Life or, was on hold, wasn't it? Like we we just felt like we were being held yeah. by by the organisation. Like yeah, we couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. That's a, very, that's a very common thing that a lot of people say they're in limbo that like they don't know what to do they're kind of stuck there um and, and laura you know you hearing that you know one thing I've, I've known about you guys is that you're very very you're, you're a team you're very supportive of each other for you laura when you, you obviously heard you know of jack's situation you kind of what's kind of running through your mind and, and what kind of you know where's your mindset at that point so You'd actually recently been promoted to sergeant, hadn't you? Mm, yeah. Um, literally like a few months before. Um, and to get to that that point as well, you'd worked so so hard. Um, and you finally got your promotion, you were great at what you did, and then we were hit with this. And you know, you, that feeling when you wake up in the morning, you think, is this really happening? That like, am yeah. I just one big nightmare? Mm-hmm. So it took us a while, I think, to almost get our heads around it. Mm-hmm. But and it was just such a roller coaster. You know, you hear different things. You think you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get out of this like scot free, or you know, yeah. you know, the other end of the, the situation. Yeah. But I think we then started to kind of almost shift our mindset. I know you started to look into other career options. So almost, mm-hmm. I guess, turn it into a positive. Yeah, that's all you can do when you're stuck in limbo. Yeah, you can think negative, 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 but then how does that help things? It, it doesn't. So yeah. we had to somehow turn it into, into a positive. And we said time and time again, look, this is this is our opportunity. Like, let's make the most out of this. Like, and you you started looking at 
was it cyber security as like a career and you know the amount of money you could potentially make out of that so it was just changing that into a positive thing although yeah there was times where you think how is, yeah. how is this positive at all but just it, the one thing as well that we always said and it's dead simple is we're going to get through it that's it and you just have to keep telling yourself that yeah and I mean, it was like pretty sometimes were very very grim tough yeah they were yeah. weren't they yeah um and it was it was just a constant but it went on for so long we were kind of like we just want this done and dusted whatever the outcome yeah and then we can move on with our lives because I, I can't remember at what point we obviously got engaged was it before that it was before yeah, that happened before that, yeah. so we got plans to get married and you know we just didn't want this one big black cloud hanging over us we just wanted to move on whatever the outcome amazing um, so yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> i love that no I, I love the minds that you have and, and obviously you, you have you have moved on which is amazing and jack i believe you went into the council and got a job there is that right yeah, I worked in the council, uh, Dobshire Council. Uh, it's a difficult role to describe. It's, I'd say it's similar to sort of, similar, similar sort of lines to a social worker, but without the sort of statutory obligations or responsibilities. It was, it was a, it was a good job. It was lots of nice people. Um, it was, yeah, a good job, lots of nice people, but it's not, it, it wasn't me. Yeah. It was like, I, I didn't really fit in. Yeah. There. You couldn't see a future there, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't see a future there, but, it, it, you know, it, it wasn't what I wanted to do, but uh, it was, I did enjoy it while I did it, and the people there were very, very good to, good to me to give me the opportunity, but it, it, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. Got you. And, and I suppose at this time, this, this, you've said, even when you was in the job, you had this kind of, kind of eagerness to have a business, but you obviously didn't know what at this stage in the council, um, after, you know, you've left the police and you're in the council, this, this, this business concept is, is building up and you still, right? Yeah. So we, I think it all started when you were, you was, thinking about setting up some sort of local food business or something, weren't you? This was before we joined Shift to Success. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Talk to me more about that. So so Laura was thinking of a setting up a food company. Do you know what? I can't even remember now because it, it was to do with supplying local food, delivering direct I, I can't I can't remember but it was food related because we love food and we love drinks <laughs> yeah um, but it was we just didn't know where to even really start did we no. um and I think I think we did discuss the idea at, at one point with you Alex before yeah. joining shift to success and you were like yeah you were basically like no it's not going to work <laughs> like, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so that that was kind of that one behind us <laughs> so yeah we started thinking about things um before um well it's kind of in between you leaving the police and mm. uh, from then on really yeah i mean i've, I've thought about having a business but i've never thought about it that in that much detail it was it was well i can't go to have my own business yeah so the extent to yeah you yeah actually, you actually have no idea yeah. So, 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 so Laura, Laura's want to think of the ideas and, and you, you were basically all up for having a, a, a business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, come along, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laura's dragging you along. Amazing. So, um, the, the idea of business, what attracts, what attracted you at the time about having your own business? Obviously you're both in jobs, you know, you're, you're fairly okay now. And you know, why, why was that kind of nagging business feeling still in you? What, what did you want essentially that a business could bring you? I think within you, we've always kind of wanted big things, haven't we? We do we do a lot of walking, um, and you know, walk past amazing houses. It's gonna sound really silly, but walk past these amazing houses, people building their own houses, and you, you kind of just think, well, how how do I get how do I get there? You know, how do I get this? Um and 
then you look at the types of people that have these things and, and you know a lot of them have their own businesses and you yeah. know the career that I'm in and at the time the career that you're in or even if you're in the police like you're never going to get that mm. so it, it's kind of like, well something's got to change you know we're not don't want to sit back keep going on walks thinking oh we'll never have that you know or yeah. you know um, so yeah I think that was yeah. like I've I've been in the police and gone through like promotion processes and stuff like that I've, I've worked really really hard to get get promoted to sergeant and then prior to the papers getting served I've been thinking about oh how much work is it going to take me to get promoted again to inspector and thinking oh it's going to be such a such a drag and such a so much effort and I won't I wouldn't necessarily get promoted even if I was head and shoulders above the next best candidate because mm. my face might not fit and yep. I just didn't relish the idea of having to go through the trenches again in a different organisation to get to where I wanted to be. Mm. Yeah. I guess it was a case of taking things into our own hands and being like, yeah, right, yeah. let's go for being it. More, more control yeah. of what what happens. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And I, I think the 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 hell that we went through with PSD, it was kind of that almost set our mindset to let's just go for this. Like let let's just go. Yeah. Now or never, right? Yeah, well, well yeah, it, it was literally that now or never, I think. Yeah, you know? yeah, um, complete understand. So, so it's kind of two different, you got kind of a few things there. Like, Jack's is like looking at his career path in the police, thinking, God, you know, how much, how many hours I've got to put into this? You know, I've got to, you know, be that person that the police wants me to be to get this position. And I might not even get that position. So, he's kind of looking ahead, thinking, actually, this is not adding up. And I did that as a DO, believe it or not. I was thinking, you know, I, I, I'm probably going to end up like these cops in 10 years if I follow the same path. And with you, Laura, obviously you're getting inspiration. You go on these walks and, and you want a better lifestyle you, for you and your family. And those houses that you look at, you're thinking, well, why can't I have that, right? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, it's at some point we want a family and it's, you know, how can we provide the best best future for our family? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think, well... My well, my say my upbringing. My granddad was a farmer. Like he was basically had his own business, you know. So it's mm -hmm. having that that freedom to basically do what you want, have have your life in your own control and without the limitations. Almost. I love that. Absolutely amazing. So at this point, that 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 business bug is is kind of getting you know bigger and bigger. And you decide to join. I remember the conversations we had. You joined Shift Success without a solid idea. And we had multiple conversations about some of your ideas from cocktail making or, or cocktail mixtures and send them out whiskey and cigars. I remember as well. Um, and I'm sure there's some others in there. Um, what made you join shift success without an idea? Cause one of the biggest things that a lot of block, a lot of people is that I'd love to have a business, but I haven't got an idea. What for you, what, what encouraged you to do it anyway? I think, well, obviously we've known you for a long time, Alex and, you know, been connected on Facebook and Instagram and so on. And, I think I ordered your book <laughs> and I read it. Did you ever read Alex's book? No, Say yes, Jack. <laughs> Say yes. <laughs> on my small reading list. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I think that was before probably we start the conversations. Um, so read that and then, yeah, we didn't have an idea, but it was the right place to be able to develop an idea that's actually going to work mm -hmm. um and obviously within the community there's just so many different people there that you know have got lots of different ideas and I don't, I don't know most people how, how can you come up with a, an idea that's going to work straight away so you have to kind of go a bit backwards and towards I think with, with things yeah I think one, one of the things I motivated maybe not motivated but attracted me to to join up is that I'm, I'm sort of like quite process driven in terms of I want to I want to know 
before I do something, I want to know, I want to research it, I want to know the ins and outs mm. of everything. So I wanted some sort of framework or, yeah, framework as yep. to it, to have an idea or generate an idea, then to take it through to fruition rather than just uh, treading water or spinning, spinning our wheels or wasting time. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Okay. Well, fantastic stuff. And obviously I'm very grateful that you obviously joined. Are you one of our top performers? And we'll go on to that and your journey in a second. Um, so all these ideas, we have conversations, cocktails, whiskey, cigars. You know, it's the theme. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Food. There's uh food there as well. Um you then well we then discuss an idea that you currently now do which is actually took off and now you're the founder of lazy days garden services so do you want to share with everyone how that came about and um and yeah talk to everyone what that is so i think as as a couple we needed something that we both really felt passionate and interested about and i know yeah as you mentioned we we spoke about cocktails and then it just didn't quite sit right did it um and then we looked at whiskey and cigars which I don't like either of them so that was something that I just wasn't (laughs) Jack loves them (laughs) (laughs) and then I think at one point we thought about um like wedding event planning because during that time we we were um, planning for our wedding um Mm -hmm. but you you didn't want to do that (laughs) (laughs) Um, so yeah that I think that was a challenge finding something that we both wanted to do um I think we're on a call with you Alex I can't remember when it was and um we kind of discussed around we both love the outdoors and you know that that kind of thinking and you I think you just said well have you thought about gardening and at the time I think we're both like oh okay like we don't really know much about gardening we know we like to spend time in our garden and you know the outdoors and everything but in terms of qualification and knowledge we were we were very limited at at that point um but it was something that we both liked the idea of wasn't it yeah Um, yeah yeah yeah. um and then so we decided to run with that we were like right we've just got to run with something you know otherwise we'll be yeah, farting yeah. around forever <laughs> um so yeah we decided to name the business lazy days gardening services and we registered that in at the end of may 2021 so where, where did that name come from because that's an amazing name where, where did it come from i think it wasn't one of the brand mentors um Man, at the time your, your idea was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Your idea. Oh, the brand mentor said, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Oh, there we are. <laughs> well, well done, Laura. Jack, Jack remembered. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, so yeah, it was just, I think we joined Shift to Success March 2021. Um, and we registered the business in the, the May 2021. So yeah, we did the research, worked through the portal. Um, kind of looked at 100 problems and so on um, and just yeah registered the business and just went, went from there amazing so what I'm getting from this guy so you've got a just do it anyway attitude and a very positive one from obviously Jack's situation the job and telling yourself that you're going to get through it and you know, your action takers I think everyone inside shift success can can see that uh, including the team that we have of mentors for you you know, you said that you haven't got any qualifications starting out um, in landscape gardening or gardening. And I can remember the AstroTurf uh, job that you did as well. And the conversation we had about that, you have this attitude of just go for it anyway. Where does that come from? And who's driving that? Is it, is it both of you or is it, you know, where's it coming from? Uh, I think both. It, different times though, isn't it? Yeah, I think I wouldn't say we completely just go for it as in there's no thought behind it at all. But again, it's coming back to, I think, more what we went through with PSD that kind of our life's been on hold. What what What's the worst that could happen? Um, you can think about it all you want, but then 
you're not going to get anywhere. I, mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Because yeah. where I'm trying to come from with this is that a lot of, of a lot of the conversations I have is that people feel like they need to be qualified in everything before yeah. they actually act. And for you guys, you know, let's talk about the AstroTurf job. That I think that comes to light straight away. You had this AstroTurf job, which was something you've never done before. And you you had some concerns, you've never done it. And then, you know, we had a conversation and you just went for it. And you did it and it turned out right. And it was a good job for you. And you haven't got that that stoppage in you that other people would use and say, oh, I can't do that because I'm not qualified. You just went for it and obviously it's working for you. So I'm just trying to figure out where's that. It's an amazing mindset. Where does that come from? Um, it's... I think it's having each other. That definitely helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if we were individual, we haven't got each. I know we've got the community to fall back on. Mm. But I think definitely having each other. And we're, be we're better at different. We're kind of like, sounds a bit cheesy, doesn't it? But we kind of, I think we do complement each other a little bit in terms of I'm good at things that you're not and vice versa. Um, but also I think it's like, you, can, you can't just, you can't just sit on your hands and say no and say, oh no, I'm not doing that because I don't know. Yeah. You, you end up saying no to more things than you say yes to and you're not really going to go anywhere. But we still, we still have moments of anxiousness and doubt when mm. we're taking on new things, but it's, it's just trying to mitigate mitigate whatever the doubts or the worries are by either perhaps seeking advice from someone or making sure we have a specialist piece of equipment to help do a particular mm. job or yeah yeah um i remember actually we first got that inquiry through so we started off with gardening garden mm -hmm. maintenance we are still doing that now um and just to go back a step, actually, on the AstroTurf job before that, we did actually do, we put some timber sleeper borders in. So that was our first kind of flavour for landscaping, although on a small yeah. scale. Um, the weather was absolutely horrendous, I remember that. But <laughs> when it was finished, it was a great feeling. So I think, although it can sometimes be quite stressful, it's that end result and that kind of high mm. that you get, that at the end that we've done this mm -hmm. um and we, we like that feeling and i think we're actually on our mini moon at the time we got this inquiry through for the astroturf job mm -hmm. and so not sure about this you know and then i think we went to take a look we quickly realized actually why not why we'd been approached but i think it was a landlord um, sorry, the dog's under the desk being really warm. Um, wow. A landlord uh, that wanted it doing, and it was an absolute jungle of a garden, terrible access, and I just don't think anybody else wanted to do it. So we were the fools and always said, yeah, okay, we'll quote for it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and then he accepted our offer, and yeah, we had we had help on board, didn't we? And um, some very stressful times um mm. but we worked through it and we got a good good result at the end so yeah you, you got the job done hey uh, jack mentioned that you obviously you complement each other in in different areas for for the business that you run kind of what what positions do you both take and like who does what and you know i think that's important for for couples who are going into business watching this um because obviously it works for you and i'm sure people take a lot away from it yeah um so i so jack's more you're the almost the doer now you're into it full time yeah. you're very you're good on the tools so this, so our idea for a romantic night is lay lay in bed i'm eating ice cream and jack's flicking through his tool catalog <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. Oh. <laughs> that's what that's what our marriage has come to. I'm not joking. Um, um, but no, you you've got 
like the quality, the processes of actually doing the yeah. installation side. You, you know, you're very, you, you research kind of YouTube videos and. Yeah, well, like I said earlier, if I'm going to do something, I want to know the ins and outs of mm. everything about it before I do it. Whereas mm. it's a bit more like Impulsive. chomping at the bit, chomping at the bit to do it. Before she's got even any idea of what what, <laughs> what the job is composed of. So um, you slow Laura down in, in this dynamic. You're, I think she, so, probably. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, if things go wrong, then you're the one that has to pick yeah, up exactly, the pieces. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I do a lot of the, I guess you call it the admin side. Mm -hmm. Um so kind of the email side, customer relationship, the sales side, after sales, getting the reviews in. Um, and then obviously I help you out where where I can. Yeah. Um, which is primarily at weekends at the moment with me working full time in the week. So yeah. it seems Amazing. to be working well. Yeah. So so the way I'm seeing this is that Laura, you are sales marketing admin and, and probably finance as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Jack, your operations, you know, you you go there, do the job, do the work, you get the logistics around the job and stuff like that. Is that is that right to say? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome stuff. Awesome. Um I think, you know, myself and my partner, um, fiance, we have some rules in our relationship when working in business. And um how would you recommend uh, a couple who go into business together um, to become more productive in their business? Are there any kind of tips that you could share with the audience of how to make this work? Um, I know one of your rules is not to talk about business after a certain time frame, um, but any others that you could share and, and also expand on what I just said as well. So I think it is a lot of it is about being clear on responsibilities, which I think we've got worked out pretty, pretty good now. Um, we've I think that has definitely been a challenge for us as as a married couple learning to separate business and married couple time. And I think it, it still does have its challenges, doesn't it? Yeah, well, when, when you kind of excited and yeah. motivated to do something it is yeah. difficult but then at the same time you do, you do have to draw a line yeah. in terms of what it's all, all you end up talking about yeah. and it's not it's, it's not healthy um, so yeah I mean you've touched on one of those things Alex so you know don't speak about it after nine o'clock um, otherwise there's a one pound penalty that goes into our honeymoon fund <laughs> So yeah, put one pound into a honeymoon fund. Yeah, um, we've used um, Google Calendar, mm -hmm. although very simple, has been an absolute like godsend for us. Like yeah. scheduling in the business time, so whether that's the actual gardening, the business desktop time, so almost like the strategy side, which at the moment we don't really have any time for. Um, the the date nights so every friday night is a date night and i think it was actually you that suggested that and we we stick to that don't we so every we don't do any work friday evenings we we go off to the pub or you know go, go out for food whatever that involves and it's it gives us it's we really enjoy it don't we it's mm. it's, it's something it's so simple but it's really important to have that time yeah so obviously we don't have a family at the moment but you know, if we did have kids, it's like that dedicated family time, you know, that you pencil in. And for us, we felt like we had to put it in the calendar. Yes. You have to, you have to be strict. Um, yeah. And now you're into it full time. What we try and do is have every Sunday off now. Because um, otherwise you could work and work and work seven days a week you, yeah. you, have, you have to draw that line um, yeah. so otherwise it becomes counterproductive i think yeah i think i think one of the conceptions you know misconceptions people have as well when it comes to business is that you know you, you have to manage your own diary and if you don't manage your diary like you said you can literally work seven days a week and actually a lot harder than ever before I think what you've done there is you've prioritized certain elements of your life and time block that out as you would for an appointment for a doctor or something. Yeah. You've actually said, actually, our relationship is going to be 
schedule scheduled in because this is a priority for us and obviously i'm assuming you know towards the end of the week you're looking forward to that so it's like again you get these like it's almost like a win at the end of the week like you get to you know relax you reward, and... you, you reward yourself almost like, yeah and yeah. i think i know definitely for me my mind is like a whirlwind like mm. it's like like it just doesn't stop so it's just calming that down a bit and just <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So just to reiterate, that's you know, time blocking out for personal time. That is uh if you do talk about business after a certain time, you've got to put money into a jar. And that's a kind of fun for yourselves. Um, and of course, of course, you delegate roles and responsibilities. So essentially, like you're not nagging Jack and Jack's not nagging you. If something's been done, that is your responsibility, you're accountable for it. Is that is that basically it? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I love that. No, that's great, great stuff. Um, so Obviously, you are Shift Success top performers. You shared your amazing presentation um, not too long ago. And, you know, again, I just want to reiterate the point. Myself and the team are so proud of what you've achieved. For those who are meeting for the first time or listening to this for the first time, in your first year, I believe you hit over 45,000 in revenue in year one. And in year two, you're set to reach 85. Okay, VAT registered? So let me just look at my numbers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was yeah around the 40k in year one um so yeah we made our first sale in the june or the july um after we registered and that was a garden maintenance regular garden maintenance service uh, monthly uh for 100 pounds a month i think that was mm. um and that was through your family friend i think yeah yeah family friend um and then the, we just started to build up. I can't remember that. I know we did some work um, for, for you, Alex. Um, mm. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> definitely. I always um, tell people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we did some work for you. And then I can't, I, I, we just started to really build up momentum to the point where we were working every weekend, weren't we? Yeah. So we we're working Monday to Friday our jobs and then every weekend obviously got the the big landscaping job the artificial grass so that was eight about eight eight thousand revenue so that that's that's interesting so in that point you've gone from doing you know 100 pound jobs 500 pound jobs to yeah. then an eight grand job yeah at that point you, you, you your mind must be like what the what the hell's uh, you know happened isn't it's a good thing but did you not think at that point jesus christ like we've just tripled our revenue essentially well more than quadrupled it actually yeah it was, it was a good feeling wasn't it for yeah um, yeah it was good but it was um it was very it was very stressful at the time yeah so it's gone, gone from mucking about with a lawnmower to then <laughs> like having a digger and digging out several tons of stuff and actually it's almost like construction isn't it going, going from Mucking about a low amount of right construction, it was a bit like, but yeah, what we're doing. So, so essentially, like, Laura gets the job and then passes it on to you, Jack, and you deal with it now. That's that's <laughs> what I'm hearing. Yeah. We, we were, I mean, yeah, it was a great feeling, but we were getting very, very tired, as you yeah. can imagine, you yeah. know, five days a week plus two days physical, you know, because it is very physical. We, we were exhausted, weren't we? We weren't seeing family. Mm. we weren't seeing friends yeah and I think family family were worried about us with how much we were working actually um yeah, yeah. and this is why you was Jack was working in his job as well at the same time right yeah okay got you okay amazing so you know you've gone from 100 pound sales 500 pound sales obviously 8,000 what's kind of been your highest kind of sale for a landscaping job would you say approximately um so we we did get one that was about double that um so yeah we we got that um amazing had a, had a few setbacks but anyway um but yeah that's been our highest highest sale um i think it got to april this year um yep. we secured another landscaping job which was around eight and a half k so similar similar size to to the first one um and it was at that point that we were kind of like i think like you had to make the jump into it full time yeah. Yeah. um because we just couldn't continue working at weekends every weekend it was just too much so that that was almost the the push 
Yeah. Um, and it was it, Jack. You were going to be the one that was always going to enter it full time first. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and then it's just been non-stop since then, really. Um, Amazing. Hey, that 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 point. You know, you've got this another sale coming through. Eight and a half grand. You both realize you can't carry on working seven days a week with both your full time jobs. You know, in the council and and, and yourself, Laura, in your job. And at that point, you, you both kind of realized, you know, we've, this is it. This is the, this is the point of, of jumping. And most people, when they come to that point, they, they kind of back out. And the way I like to, you know, explain this is that I, I've never been parachuting, by the way, when I say this, but I, I heard Will Smith talk about this. And he says, you know, when you're end of the, um, you're about to jump out of a plane is the most scary part is when you're about to jump, you're, you're looking over the, the ledge and essentially you're going to jump. When you realize that point of shit, this is this is time. Was you fearful? Was you scared? Was you excited? You know, what's kind of running through your mind at that at that point? I think I pushed you, didn't I? The <laughs> Laura shoved him. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it it was, it was. Um, I was anxious about it. It was more not. It it was the fact that I didn't know on the 25th or whatever the date was, I'm getting paid on this day, no matter mm. what. I think that was the the thing that was worried, I was worried about. And then I was, I was worried about why I was still finding my feet, whether or not we would then make enough to then be able to pay me um, on, on that date again. Um, and then it was just weird. It was just weird for um, a good fortnight, at least, thinking I'm doing this every day now. This is actually my job. It, it was it was odd. Mm. I think as well that that job that was your first job going into it full time. I'd set a shorter time frame than I probably should have done. Yeah. And that put a lot of stress. Uh, but we've learned from that, you know, not, not to schedule in set dates for things. So we, we've learned from that. Um, but I think to add extra confidence to you leaving, obviously I was still in my job at the point. So it was, you know, if if we haven't got, if we're not busy or if we haven't got work coming in, I can support us, you know. So I think that was all, it's all yeah. that was like the safety yeah. blanket as well. Us. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't want it to come to that. that no, no, that's why I was. I was anxious about it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's like a guy thing. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I feel that. Um, but kind of what you did there was look at the element of risk. If it came to worst case, of course, there's an income there already that could support you guys, right? Amazing. Okay. And, you know, looking back for both of you, because it's a big thing for both of you, you know, one one person going into the business full time, looking back, which was it the scariest moment just about you before you're about to do it? Or actually, was it after you resigned? Which which was kind of the scariest looking back? Um, I think the scariest point for me was having resigned, showing up to this job on the first day, thinking, mm-hmm. bloody hell, there's loads to do here. What am I going to do? Am I going to be able to do it all? I'm not getting paid again on the 25th. I best pull my finger out and get my shovel and crack on. Do you, do you feel that pressure cre- created that result for you, Jack? That, 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 that pressure was a good thing? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it, I think it, I mean, I've, I've always been really driven and wanting to, to achieve a good result with whatever I put my mind to. But yeah, a little bit of extra pressure didn't harm things, yeah. I think it's that sink or swim as well, isn't it? And it's kind of like, you haven't got a choice. This has got to work. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, you've got, to, you've got to swim, you know, and... Yeah, you, you had all the skills there, you know. Um, yeah, and it all worked out. You didn't. It was amazing. It looked amazing. It's on our website. The the finished results. So we're, we're very very proud of that. Um, yeah. Awesome. Hey, Jack, you know, from the police, you know, a, a lot of police officers think they haven't got the skill sets to build a business. They haven't got this. They haven't got that. They undervalue a lot of themselves. Um, 
you know, through the conversation that we have with, with police officers. For you, looking back or, or even now, you know, what skill sets do you believe you bought into the business world that's that's kind of set you apart and, and made this business success? I'm going to Laura in a second. Um, I think being able to work in, it sounds a bit grandiose, but work in adversity when things are hard, things are difficult, there's lots of things to do to be able to just carry on and, and, and get it done. I mean, there are still times where I, I won't say that I have a wobble, but sometimes I think, oh my God, I've got so much stuff to do. Mm. I think cops in general just have a an attitude of, you might have a bit of a moan about something, but then having done that, they'll they'll just get it done. Um, and I think, I think that is something that I've been able to kind of carry forward. And I think being able to be adaptable as well, um, because obviously you don't, in the police, you don't know what your day is going to consist of. You might be doing one thing and then suddenly you're doing something else. And I think that helps when either you come across a problem or you do it, you think you think you were doing something one way and then there's an issue and then you suddenly have to change your approach. Um, that all sounds very vague, but you know, I do, I yeah. do there are a lot of a lot of skills that yeah. everyone in the police probably take for granted. And yeah. you'll be good at a lot of things that you don't necessarily realise straight. Yeah. yeah so what i'm hearing that you know resilience yeah you kind of got that i know you got adaptability versatility yeah as well and from jack you know from your personal opinion why do you think police officers undervalue their skill sets when it comes to skills outside the job i think because um i think the cops have lo loads and loads you, you're good at so many things you're good at you're good at talking to people you're good at working under pressure or in adversity you you're good at doing things to a time frame you're good at managing multiple deadlines but a lot of these skills don't necessarily have some sort of qualification or uh, an award attached to them. Yeah. Uh, and I think because of that, people don't take, like the person themselves doesn't necessarily take them as seriously mm. as somebody who's perhaps got some sort of uh, recognised qualification or, or something like that if, that, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 makes sense. I get what you're saying. And, and for, for Laura, you know, what kind of skill sets do you think you've bought into the into the business world that you've got from your current job um so i guess practical wise um my my upbringing has been in farming so i've always been very outdoorsy kind of from literally like three years old since when i could walk you know carrying buckets and so quite hands-on from that respect um but then i entered um a career in animal nutrition um, and currently I'm a product manager so my background is very science-based but throughout the, the 10 years I've been in the industry I've um, done account management I've done marketing so a lot of those skills learned over the last 10 years have obviously become very useful and valuable in the business so yeah, it's kind of a combination of all things. And I love, I love sales, you know, that's, uh, yeah. I mean, you obviously can't like every customer, but, you know, I love going out and talking to customers and, you know, you might say I'm a bit too chit chatty sometimes and all of this. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think that's important to build that relationship with the customer and, mm -hmm. but also, being on a professional level at the same time and it's just making sure that their needs are, are met and that they're being listened to 
you know because ultimately they're the ones that are going to pay for your for our service so amazing um, yeah Absolutely. You can, I mean, both of you explaining your, your skill sets there, you can see the synergy and why it's working straight away, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I know you've been in business, you know, just over a year, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah eight, 18 months. 18 months. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And in that 18 month period, what would you say has kind of the, been the biggest business lesson for you personally? Business lesson. Uh, I think don't try and achieve perfection. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think, like we said, you you are a perfectionist. I'm not. I'm a bit bullish, like bull in a china shop. (laughs) (laughs) This is a good. This is a cool dynamic because normally it's the it's the it's normally the guy who's the bull in a china shop. (laughs) (laughs) So it's you know. yeah just don't try and achieve perfection because a that might not be achievable anyway and b you might not ever you're never going to get anywhere if you you're constantly searching for that perfection Mm. um and like I think what we've picked up here like you just got to get it done just get on with it like I'm very much under the kind of mindset what's the worst that can go wrong almost Mm. Okay, yeah, there is, you obviously do have to think about it, but it, it, it's working, I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just just be accountable for, you know, we're business owners, you've got to be responsible for, for your business, there's almost no, no excuses, you know, you're, you're the owners, you're the ones that are going to drive that forward, mm. you know, um, yeah. Hope that makes sense yeah it makes perfect <laughs> sense you, you hold yourself to accountable and make sure that you you get the job done yeah. and for you jack what kind of you know laura's the bull in the china shop and you're the one kind of you know thinking about things and methodical and thinking about processes for you kind of what's been your biggest lesson would you say over the last 18 months i would say sometimes i um get bogged down too much sometimes in the details in terms of I'm thinking of if I'm doing something or A, B, C, D might happen, I need to have a response to A, I need to have and nine times, well, not nine times out of ten, but a lot of the time that's not necessarily needed. And I think I at times probably not waste time, but I waste my mental effort I think in trying to foresee every possible circumstance and then trying to have a contingency for every possible circumstance Mm. so I think that's again why me and Laura work well together because we're almost then on an even keel in terms of I, I want to be methodical about absolutely everything whereas Laura's a bit more or oh, just do it on the fly and then we meet we meet in the middle um but again i i do struggle at times with wanting everything to be perfect and again as laura says sometimes perfection or my idea of perfection isn't achievable or possible and it, it honestly at it, it times it, it upsets me and bothers me it's mm-hmm. just trying to not let it dwell bother me too much. Yeah, because you've got this, this is going a bit into, look, you've got a digital spirit level. And if it's like 0.05 a degree out, it's like, nope, it's not good enough. I'm like, it's fine. I love that. It's <laughs> um, a person of his craft, right? I think, to be honest, you know, I wish, I wish more people, you know, in the trade were like that. I mean, I've worked with some trades, you know, do the properties and they just weren't like that, Jack. So although it can be, you know, a bit of a hindrance at times, it can be a blessing as well because, and also I suppose knowing that you've done the job right is a, you can, you've got integrity. I think, you know, yeah, you're not cutting yeah. corners. Yeah. It, it, it's just, I think I'm sometimes a bit, a bit too, looking about too much, trying to make it, it perfect. Yes. Yeah. It, it's 
it's not even it's not even no, detectable. No. Yeah, it's not yeah. Like type thing. It's yeah. I yeah. think in terms of all the lessons learned, it's kind of whether it's a lesson or not, but like expect a roller coaster and if things go wrong you learn you learn from them you can't you can't expect it to be plain sailing and easy and stress-free because you know i say to you time and time again otherwise everyone would be doing it very true so it's not going to be easy i think it's easy to look on social media and see all like the the highs and the wins and the flash cars but you you don't see like why would you ever put up there what goes on behind the scenes and the stress and the anxiety and everything that that you go through as a business owner because that is I'd say the biggest part yep um but the wins that you get out of it Mm -hmm. you know more than more than you know outweigh outweigh the stresses so yeah I remember when we got that big landscaping job and you weren't in I got this text through and I did like a little dance in the lounge like I was so happy (laughs) (laughs) I just yeah yeah (laughs) um but you've got to be prepared to work hard you you've got to be prepared to be stressed and worried and not sleep and you know you you wake up um when we've been through stressful situations you wake up in the middle of the night with worry and not sleep and things like that but it's kind of almost all worth it in the end because then it it kind of continues to drive you forward and helps you grow further as a per I think as a person and as a a business um yeah yeah that makes perfect sense you basically what you're going through you know I think James Clear the author of Autobic Habits said that um entrepreneurship is a um personal development journey disguised as a business pursuit mm-hmm. and it's so true and what you're saying there is like the ups and the downs the road coast that you're going through is essentially that you are growing as a person as you go through that but also it's going to allow your business to grow as well yeah um i think you know that's amazing that's you know it's, it's a very good concept to to understand um i think so- when you get those wins as well and you know the money get go, lands in your bank account and then you know you book something whether it's a weekend away or you know we've got obviously our honeymoon coming up it it almost makes that a lot more rewardable you think yeah I bloody worked hard for this like yeah. I, I deserve it so you know it, it swings and roundabouts yeah it's like, it's like the cost for freedom right what you're going through in business is the cost for the lifestyle you get to live that's that's yeah. what it is and you know I've always said I'm I'm technically unemployable now. I could never go back to having a, a job personally just because I know what's what's possible. So I completely um, relate to what you're saying. Hey guys, what's kind of your um, vision for the future? Where where do you want to take Lazy Days Garden Services? Um, so we are on hope. Yeah, by the end of kind of year two, we I'm confident we'll be that registered. Um. I I'd like to double that in year three. Amazing. Um, the way we're gonna do that, I think first steps will be to recruit. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What was Jack thinking there when you said recruit? No, no, it's not that. It's more. No. Cracking the whip, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Laura's the one who's cracking the whip. There's, uh, there's only so much you can do by yourself because obviously it, it takes up physical time. You yep. know, it's, um, it, it's kind of time is the limiting thing, isn't it? So the only thing we're going to get more work in and fulfill more work is to get more um, people in. Um, so I think that start of next year um at least one person to take on and then see where we go from there absolutely um, amazing yeah amazing hey you're obviously very active on social media i love seeing your updates on social media you know your posts your jobs um i will say it's absolutely amazing i just want to say as well that i'm not i'm not being biased here i would ne- if i didn't know you i would never have guessed you've been doing this business for 18 months the work that you do 
is phenomenal. I know you've worked on some of my properties already. It's absolutely exceptional. And I wouldn't, yeah, you just wouldn't guess. You think you've been in this for many, many years. Um, but you you obviously do your social media. Um, that's, you know, I think that's a very important thing that you do. Um, do you schedule that in? You know, I know Jack's been on social media as well. And, and I know you have Laura and you talk about what you're doing, et cetera. You know, I think that's allows you to stand out. But do you, do you schedule that in as, as a priority for your business or? It's I often. try and I try and post something at least once a week. Um, I don't schedule it in. I kind of just do it as as and when. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's nothing. The the way I kind of approach it is, what do our customers want to see? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like the before and after shots of the transformations. Whether it's a hedge, you know, something very basic, or it's a complete garden transformation. So that for me is it's it's looking at it from the customer's perspective, not not how you're doing something, which you know I might might put the odd thing on, but for a customer, if I was a customer, I'd be like, well, I don't really care how you do it. I just want you to create the end result, the outcome for me. You know, yeah. that that's the type of garden, that's the that's they're the types of plants that I want in my flower bed, or you know. So I don't we don't do anything fancy in terms of social media we haven't done any paid advertising or anything like that it's just very try and just get some good photos and what we think is going to appeal to our, our audience absolutely amazing I and like I said it's very important it shows just a level of authenticity and I think a lot of you know people in the trade or different trades just don't do it enough in my personal opinion I just think it's a it's a great little touch that you do um you mentioned kind of uh, from a marketing perspective you know Obviously, I'm assuming a lot more referrals come in than they did when starting out. But for you, kind of, what's kind of your main driver from marketing? Oh, sorry. What? What's kind of your main driver of marketing? Is is it is it social media? Is it is it Google? Is it referrals? Is it letters, leaflets? We yeah, we get most of our inquiries <laughs> through where people do a Google search. Mm -hmm. um so it might be gardener or landscaping near me um Mm -hmm. and then they'll find our business on google and then we've got we we ask every customer to leave us a google review um Um, you know add some referrals yeah we've we're starting now to get quite a few referrals through as well which is really good and i know there's various different groups on facebook like spotted derby or you know i know there's regional ones and people are recommending us through that so we're starting to see quite a bit more of that recently amazing um we've got our website now um so that's really just an extra that's just for me that's more of like a place to showcase our work yeah. um, and obviously another point to, to contact us and it just adds that credit extra credit creditability to the company um yeah leafleting flyers um we've done a bit of that we've got a box full of flyers sat on the dining room table um <laughs> which <laughs> i need i need to hand them out before we go before we go away actually but that's just yeah. a bit of a, a hedge cutting campaign that we want to run um so we've had some success with kind of door-to-door flyers before um and then the only other thing we do is advertise in a local magazine um mm-hmm which is very, I think it costs us £100 for three months, local magazine, and we've picked up, I think we've, we've picked up over a grand's worth of business from that, um, wow. which my concern with doing that initially was we we're just going to attract all the wrong types of customers or, mm-hmm. you know, but actually we've, it's been worthwhile. We've been referred by other companies as well haven't we that we've shared work with so yeah we we don't do like tree tree works we don't cut trees down and stuff like that we've gone to a job seeing that we can't do it and have we've got a bit of a relationship now to arborist tree surgeon companies and we share we give them work and they give us work back, vice versa. So it works yeah. quite well. Yeah, yeah. It's just building up those contacts <laughs> within within the industry, the lo- local, like yeah, local tree surgeons referrals. Um, yeah, just building relationships up with with other people that you can collaborate on and partner with. So that's been that's working really well as well. 
Amazing. I love it. And and guys, um, what would you say kind of inspires you to live your, your best life? What kind of inspires you to be better, become better, do better, would you say? For me, it's the f- thinking about the future. Mm. Um, family or? Yeah, like I say, we want, we want a family. Yeah. Um, soon, hopefully. <laughs> um, so it's creating a future for a family. It's, it's, for me, it's thinking when I get to, I haven't got to work in a career where I've got to start at 9am in the morning, mm. finish at 5pm, dictated by somebody else when I'm 65, you know, if, if we mm. want to not retire, but, you know, still own our business, but someone else is running it when we're 50, for mm-hmm. example, that that could be a nice that could be a nice option to have. So I guess it comes back to the freedom. I love it. And um, just creating that better future and having having almost what we want when we want. I love that. And, and Jack, same for you or? Yeah, I think I, I do kind of think about the future, but maybe not to as much as an extent as well. I'll just try and try and think like um if i'm whatever whatever i'm doing or whatever job i'm on i think try and think like how can this be better than the time that i did it previous if it if it's some if it's if it's a similar type thing um oh i made a little mistake here last time I don't want to make that here, or I want this to look a little bit better in this respect. So it's, it's more, I suppose it's more day to day kind of what I'm thinking, but just just trying to be a little, do things a little bit better each time. Yeah, just trying to get that 1% better each time you do a yeah. job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just progression. Incrementally, incrementally get better at whatever it is. Amazing. So hopefully, at some point, be almost like to the cream of the crop type thing yeah I, I want i want us to be or the business to be known as the best in in the area yeah, yeah. Where, whether we go national we, we don't know yet but to be recognized as the, the go-to gardening landscaping company in derbyshire nottinghamshire and, and be renowned for the standards of work that, that we carry out you know yeah. and i i think when when we did the presentation at the the awards evening, you know, it makes we're we're proud, aren't we, to to own a business and say, look, this is what we do, this is what we've done, this is what we did last week, this is the big garden transformation, you know. So I think that that's a big mot- motivation as well to be able to talk about about that and show it off almost. I love it. Absolutely love it. Hey guys, for everyone watching, if there was going to listen to on the podcast, um, where can people find out about your business, your website, your social media handles, etc.? Do you know what they are? I do. Uh, <laughs> it's a test. Uh, <laughs> no. No, 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 no. <laughs> so so we've, we, our website is www.lazydaysgardeningservices.com. Um, we're on social media again under Lazy Days Gardening Services, Facebook and Instagram um and yeah google as well um yeah i think that's it amazing i recommend everyone to check out their uh, their google reviews absolutely exceptional um and guys one of the last questions i like to ask everyone who joins the show and i'm going to ask you both individually is for you laura what what does entrepreneurship mean to you i think for me it's about I don't know if this is a cheesy thing to say, but like doing life our way. Like we're we're in control. We we can take it however far we want. Like the sky's the limit and we're in control of that. Um yeah, and just creating that future and life that that we that we've always wanted. Um yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that was an amazing answer to be fair that was that was a fantastic answer jack jack's got to follow that now ditto. <laughs> um i think it's about being open to and making the most of the opportunities that you get 
um, and having an overwhelmingly kind of optimistic type attitude. Yeah. Really <laughs> amazing stuff guys guys uh, look i just want to say this i've absolutely been an amazing uh show interview and um you know as the first couple we've had on uh it's been really inspiring to hear your story of how you've met and how you work together and the challenges that you've been through uh again i want to reiterate the point that myself and shift success are extremely proud of what you've achieved only in 18 months with starting from no business side well a few business ideas but not a solid business idea to go in where you are now is, is absolutely exceptional. And I have no doubt that you, your, your business is going to go from strength to strength. And uh, yeah, we're really excited for your future. So uh, a massive congratulations from myself again. And um, yeah, exciting times ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. All right, guys. So um, I'm going to be putting this onto the YouTube channel um, later this week. And of course, this is going to be put onto the podcast as well. So you can listen in the car. And uh, if you've got any questions following this, please do reach out to, to Laura and Jack or myself. Um, and if you're in the Nottingham area or Derby area, um, please, please do reach out to Lauren Jack for the exceptional work that they're doing. Uh, I can have, you know, first review on that. They've done some work for me and it's been outstanding. So, uh, so yeah, reach out to them guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you all soon. Thank you. See you later. Bye.